exclusive podcast right here on the trancatnight.org website. Folks, today is April the 26th, 2021. I hope you all are having a very wonderful and blessed day. As always, we continue to keep the programming moving along Monday through Saturday. Typically three or four guests on every day. Today is no different. We just finished up a few minutes ago with Catholic Danish journalist uh, Ibn Thranholm, uh, who was breaking down the insanity happening in Denmark uh, as a result of a COVID madness. Uh, we've got coming on the show a little bit later today, we've got Dr. Shiva, uh, who's going to be giving us uh, his analysis. First time guest on the program. Looking forward to that one. We also have uh, Adam Green from No More News and uh, someone who joins us uh, every month in breaking down all the latest craziness, whether it's covid We've also done podcast series on uh, surviving communism, which we're going to pick back up today. But today we're going to be talking countering. Uh, I think we're going to cover five or six of uh, the communist goals. So how we're going to counter that, we'll get uh, an update, too, from Stefan Verstappen in regards to commie land Canada. Uh, and then maybe just talk a little bit more. I'm kind of getting tired of talking about COVID, but, you know, this ain't going to go away. It's so hard not to do a podcast without uh, talking about it. But before we hand it over to Stefan, folks, get on over to a gift to light dot com. Now, a gift to light is a candle company which offers a unique way to commemorate a special occasion to remember a loved one uh, with a candle that will display your personal photos, uh, prayer and or message. Uh, now, every candle is hand poured, customized with a scent of your choice. There's six inches tall, 22 ounce candle with a burn time of 120 hours. Your personal photos <laughs> are wrapped around the entire candle, 360 degrees. So do take advantage of that, folks. We have 247rosary.com, and it is an online radio station that plays the traditional rosary every half hour, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. That's 247rosary.com. We also have to make mention of John Dean's jacksbury.com, another prolific Catholic outlet. Uh, John Dean has been with Triad Cat Night for a very long time. He's got a Seven Sorrows of Mary section or Father Voight Reflection. Check that on out. Get to know John Dean. Bookmark it today, jacksberry.com. We also have to make mention of Richard Gratzinger's uh, gloryandshine.com. And this is another uh, prolific uh, Catholic outlet. They're featured all throughout the Traditionalist uh, Network. Uh, so we're very honored to have them as a sponsor. They're our exclusive sponsor for the next four web conferences uh, and also for the YouTube channel. Uh, but they put forth their passion and love for Jesus Christ Universal Church into, act, into action by creating natural and supernatural self-care products. Every item is crafted with a deep intention while holding a vision of sharing the gospel through ordinary acts of everyday life. The products are great for my body and the soul. I've received some complimentary items. Thank you so much, Richard. They are fantastic. Get on over there today and check it on out. The Three Days of Darkness kits are still going strong. Purple scapulars are back in rotation. Kathleen Loney is the woman you want to contact. Kathleen L. Loney at gmail.com. Uh, it's about three to four month lead time on these products due to the process and limited uh, availability with some of these herbs that are put into uh, the kits. Uh, and again, it's in accordance with Catholic prophecy, uh, but the prayer sacramentals and herbs, uh, which are going to be needed, uh, according to certain mystics. So contact her today on last but not least, Kath, uh, Chris Gagne is inviting all Catholics to increase their devotion to the Holy souls, which have gone before us. It's not just a November 1st thing. It's not just a November thing. It's an everyday thing. As I mentioned, someone we've been bringing on for quite some time. He's joined us, uh, for a web conference too. our, uh, prepping survivalist, uh, uh, web conference uh, is Stefan Verstappen, and we just kind of joking off air, just the madness uh, we have to deal with Steph, uh, Stefan, so maybe get uh, a few minutes of talk of uh, COVID in before we get into countering these five or six uh, comedy, comedy goals that you want to break down today. But I also find it interesting, because we, we have well, I'm, we have a decent amount of, uh, of uh, Canadian guests on here, and I was joking, I think it was last week when I brought on Kennedy Hall from the Fatima Center, and it was the day that the U.S. News broke its like best country, uh, like whatever, and Canada came in at number one, and I thought about you immediately, because I knew I was going to ask you this when we came on. Uh, how about that? The U.S. News report reporting that Canada is like your, the most livable, I think it was called like the most livable country or something like that, and I was about fell out of my chair when I saw this, because I I know how you would react, but uh, uh, what do you think of that, Stefan? <laughs> well, I am proud to live in the workers' paradise of Upper America Incorporated. <laughs> and, uh, very proud to be number one in the Department of Slavery and Ass Kissery. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I mean, you know, like, listen, this all comes out through the media why anyone in this modern day and age with access to information on the internet would for a moment take anything 
a magazine or a newspaper or a news show says to be true, then please get the vaccine, get many vaccines, get the booster, get the second vaccine, get the follow-up vaccine, get the monthly vaccine, get the yearly vaccine, because the human population doesn't need you <laughs> if you're that dumb. I'm sorry. Let's, let's uh, you know, we are... Nature is cruel. I love nature, but I never fool myself into thinking that it is by any means benign. It's not. It's very cruel and violent. And under a normal kind of society, people that are stupid enough to believe anything they see on TV would be bred out of existence. It would be a form of eugenics. You know, women wouldn't want to marry any man that is stupid enough to watch TV and think what they're seeing is in any way related to reality. And so that stupid gene will be bred out of the population, but we have the exact opposite now. Stupidity is rewarded. Degradation, depravity is idolized. Um, so we have a lot of these people. That's why I say if, if you think the government is you know, in your best interest, then by all means, get the vaccine. Take many of them. Get as many as you can. <laughs> yeah. Some kind of award, you know, see who gets the most uh, vaccines in a year. Uh, yeah. it'll, it'll be hand- the Trudeau Award. Yeah, the Trudeau Award. Get a nice little picture of Trudeau up on your, uh, your refrigerator. But uh, today, yes, we are going to be discussing how to, co- uh, to uh, counter uh, five or six of these uh, top commie goals uh stefan so if we could uh let us uh, begin okay so listen the communists have already told us a long time ago what their aims and goals are um and we are now living under a communist tyranny make no mistake about it the constitution it's gone it's over forget about it you have no rights what we see now with this Uh, And I'm going to call it the cooties uh, because we have to always use code words from now on. So if I use the proper term for the alleged uh, disease that is spreading throughout the world, then we will automatically be demonetized. Right. So I can't say the COVID word because forget about nobody's going to hear this podcast because they'll show us. Oh. We're behind a paywall, buddy. You can say whatever you want. I think I think you do post these on your end, but you, you could you could feel free. I post them on my end, Eric. That's why. Okay. I'm okay. So so yeah, we're gonna we're gonna be careful. <laughs> okay. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> so the code word for today, folks, is cooties, and the other code word is candy, uh, and candy refers to a certain medical procedure that involves a syringe. Um, this is how we have to talk now. Because we are under a communist tyranny. Make no mistake about it. There is no democracy. There is no republic. There is no Second Amendment, First Amendment, any of the uh, any of the uh, the rights and freedoms that were uh, codified under the Constitution. We always had those rights and freedoms. The Constitution doesn't give it to us. We have them. We're born with them. The Constitution merely codifies it and puts it into law. So what we see going on now is a result of communism, the shutdowns, the lockdowns, the where you can stand, where you can go, who you can meet. Can you have dinner at your house? Can you go out for a walk in the park? This is communism. It's got nothing to do with the cooties. And um, it, none of this would be possible if we still lived under a true Republican or Republic democracy. Because, listen, all these rules came into being through executive orders. An executive order, I can't, you know, I can't understand. Don't they teach civics anymore in the United States? There's no such thing as an executive order. This is an imperial decree. This is what the emperors and kings used to do. They would say, well, I've decided to make this law and everybody just obeyed and that was it. It was law. Um, And now we have not just presidents or alleged presidents um, issuing executive orders by the hundreds. You know, when you saw that that lunatic, that mentally deficient pedophile Biden sitting there at the desk signing one executive order after another. 
he should have been arrested immediately for treason to the state and hung as 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 would be proper for such a charge um and it, these it's illegal there's no such thing as an executive order and now not only do these lunatics like biden writing executive order but every sub level sycophant and bootlicker like that mayors and governors they're all issuing <laughs> executive mm-hmm. orders mm-hmm. well let's all just issue an executive order stefan is going to issue an executive order um my first executive order is that the swedish bikini team must spend every weekend at my apartment this you know like you can't make this stuff up. and then people go along with it so everything all your rights and freedoms have already been stripped oh it'll go away once everybody gets the candy uh no it's not going away they already told you even though you get the candy you still have to wear the mask you still have to social distance you can still pass it to others and then you need some more candy after that come on people don't what don't people understand about this lunacy that they've foisted on us it's insanity but that's what happens under communism so we're there now uh, we've been warned since the 1930s about this and we were passive and apathetic we didn't fight it we didn't fight for our freedoms and now they're gone so what i want to talk about today is mm. last ditch effort to try and save <clears throat> a little bit of your life to try and salvage a few freedoms from the bonfire you know pull out the the charred remnants of your your rights and freedoms and maybe hang on hang on to them for a little bit longer so let's talk about that today so number one you've heard them all say this it's the abolition of private property um we've heard this already you will own nothing and you will be happy now to me personally i am not terrified about this i already own nothing <laughs> <laughs> And I am relatively happy, considering I'm uh, the last sane person in a lunatic asylum. But still, you know, relatively speaking, I'm happy. I own a bicycle, a canoe, and a computer. And if my computer can earn me enough money to spend a couple hours a day on my bicycle or in my canoe, then I'm happy. Mm. But for a lot of people, you're going to be very unhappy when they take your house, Mm -hmm. when they take everything you own. So... For those, uh, uh, every I know guys that you know. Okay, they got they they have a house, you know. The mortgage is not too big on it, you know. They think they're safe. Well, you know, I own property. I, I got a house, got a couple of cars. You know, I'm, I'm doing good. I'm okay. You know, whatever's going to come down the pipe, it's not going to affect me because I own my own house. <laughs> well, they're coming for everything. <clears throat> They're coming for everything. Make no mistake. If you, I don't care how much money you got in the bank or how big your house is, they will come and take it, and they will come and take it so fast it'll make your head spin, and in two months you'll be poor and destitute and sleeping under an overpass. Don't think that's not coming. They already told you that's what they're going to do, and we are already under a communist tyranny. So what <laughs> you think? They're not going to follow through on their promises to rob you of everything you own. So what I would recommend, and listen, if I owned a house knowing that within five years the government will take it, and they can take it in a number of ways, dozens of different ways. Remember, the communists are the central bankers, and all they have to do is uh, call in their mortgage, and you're done. Uh, even if you have a small mortgage, maybe your house is worth $2 million and you got a $100,000 mortgage. It's nothing, right? But if they call in that $100,000, do you have $100,000 cash? No. Two months later, you're out. That's it. No. Well, then you will sell your property, your $2 million property in time. <laughs> really? And you think this hmm. giant property bubble isn't going to be bursting at exactly the same time that they're calling in their mortgage because what's going to happen is millions and millions of people are going to lose their homes because they can't come up with a hundred thousand dollars for the mortgage Mm -hmm. and when millions of people put their houses up for sale do you think they're still going to be worth what you thought they were worth 
They're going to be bought out for pennies on the dollars by agents and operatives of the central banks, and you're out. That's it. The claim imminent domain too. I've seen a, a lot of propaganda on that. Sure. Uh, on that, that even to where even if you own it, you don't have a mortgage. Um, they'll still could just come out of your property and give you the whole spiel of uh, we we need to legitimately redistribute uh, your resources because there's other more needy people or whatnot. However, they're going to say it, but I've seen Absolutely. them. Yeah. Yeah, what, what I was saying about, you know, the call in the mortgage, that's just one of a dozen ways they're going to steal mm-hmm. your property. If they don't do that one, then the next one is eminent domain. Oh, well, uh, you know, the, uh, the the Bureau of Land Management has determined that your property infringes on the rights of the red wing blackbird. <laughs> I guess the old red wing blackbird. <laughs> the, the Biden blackbird. They'll, they'll probably name it after like uh, some of these puppet uh, puppet politicians. Yeah, so they'll take it that way. Or the other thing that they they can do, and, and this will happen too. I mean, it might be all three all at the same time. Eminent domain, calling in your mortgage, and the other thing is your property tax. Yeah. Property tax mm-hmm. is an illegal thing. It's We should not have to pay rent to the government for property we own. Uh, but uh, I know guys now, they're paying, you know, ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 a year. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Property tax. Now, Let's say they come in and they say, well, we've re- reassessed your property because of the real estate bubble, and now you owe $60,000 a year in property taxes. How many people are going to be able to afford that? Yeah. We are all living on the edge, hand to mouth. You know, what was that statistic? 60% of Americans don't have 400 bucks in the bank in case of an emergency. And now the government will come in and say, well, we, you owe us another 40000 bucks." That's it. Bye-bye. They're going to take your house. Uh, oh, well, you'll try and sell it in time. Oops, no. The property <laughs> bubble burst. People right. aren't going to buy houses when they can't get mortgages, and the banks hauled in the mortgages. So, look, there's a half a dozen ways that they're going to steal your house. Here's what's guaranteed. They're going to steal your house. We live already under a communist dictatorship. They've already told us they want to steal our houses. It's just a matter of when. So what I would do if I owned a house, I would try and get all the equity I could out of it, and I would invest it in gold, silver, um, food supplies, survival equipment, firearms, ammunition. Right, a tank. A tank. <laughs> Well, you know, because they're going to take it anyway. So if I have a $100,000 mortgage, they're going to take it. If I have a half a million dollar mortgage, they're still going to take it. But I might have been able to take $100,000 worth of cash out of it now and put that cash to good use. Yeah, I've actually argued. Uh, well, I can't recall. Off air, I've argued with a few economists on this because, you know, in theory, everyone wants to be debt free. But uh, the point that I keep bringing up is like the communists are coming for everything and you, they know that they want us as in debt and possible. I'm like, OK, well, if we know we're looking at, a, you know, three to five year ranges, I think you're insinuating too. Uh, yeah. just use some of that debt and go out and start buying up a whole bunch of food, get gold. Uh, if they're going to be stupid enough to give you like a 0% credit card or whatnot and uh, get the, uh, guns and ammo and get all that stuff in the short term. That way you at least have a fighting chance. You know what I mean? And I've had some account. Rah, 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 rah. I mean, like, I think they're a little bit delusional that this isn't going to go down the path that you and I know it's going to go. You know, they still think, oh, well, Trump's going to come back and everything's going to be great. And I'm like, no, this this is there is no comeback from this in the in the short term. So, no, no. Uh, so um, it's a uh, fate accompli. You know, it, it, the fat lady has sung. It's just a matter of tidying up the loose ends now. And the loose mm-hmm. ends is you still owning a house. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's coming. Anyway, so that's my, you know, my, my uh, worry about that. And that's what I would do if I owned a house. Because, you know, whether they t- steal your house and you still owe a lot of money, it doesn't matter. They don't care. Yeah. Money is nothing to them, you know. They just want your property. Mm-hmm. That they care about. Whether you owe money or they don't care. They're not going to come after you. Um, and if they did, well, you've, you know, set aside enough gold and silver and stuff that you can, you know, uh, go rent a property. I personally, uh, I'm in favor of renting because they've already told us that everybody's going to end up being 
uh, living in a rental unit, and you're going to be paying your rent directly to the communist government. Now, what about the? Th- I mean, my thesis is, and you, you know, we've gone down uh, this path. I think in uh, our web conference, even you know, the next big step that I'm looking at for this land is is buying land, and the whole thought process would be to find people of a like mind who are going to be strapped, armed to the teeth. And on on a homestead, you know, have the shooting ranges, have the gardens, have this or that. And ultimately, no, they're still going to come for that. As a matter of fact, they'll probably come for that first as opposed to the homes, in my humble opinion. But if you have enough uh, people and perhaps you're out in the most remotest areas, and I get it, there will be drones flying above. And I know I've explained to you, uh, Stefan, I think it's going to be through divine intervention that we get through this uh, process. So there are many Catholic prophecies that indicate we'll go invisible uh, to these uh, communists out in the wooded areas and wildernesses and kind of all that stuff. Um, but I keep saying this, like, this doesn't end peacefully. Like, whether you're in the urban area, whether you're whatever area you're in, they are going to attempt to come for you, and you are going to have to fight back. And we all know the luxury resorts that they have waiting for us. And I say that sarcastically with the smart cities and the FEMA camps or whatnot, so we know where we're going to be relocated. And I'm like, I ain't going down that path, right? So I don't know, yeah. man. Uh, people aren't ready, though. They're not ready for this. I mean, they think that's like fantasy. When you when you mention, I, I you know, I was talking about this with a, a Christian friend the other day, and he was looking at me like I had like not, like nineteen heads. Like, dude, what are you talking about? <laughs> you know what I mean, I'm like, this is literally right in front of us, and these people don't see it. Well, yeah, and exactly. And and do you need an example? Yes. Here's an example: Russia, Poland, Lithuania, Latvia, Estonia, Bulgaria, China, Cambodia, Venezuela. There, go and look. Did they take all their property and all their houses? Yes, they did. You know, so don't don't think, oh, well, it won't happen here because Americans are going to be they're they're more righteous and they'll fight back. Oh, too late. Americans are just as much as a pushovers as everybody else. Uh, you know, Western Europe, Canada, Australia, New Zealand. Everybody's taken the Kool Aid, and uh, they've all gone insane. Nobody's fighting back. Okay. A few protests and and yes mm-hmm. and I, I I applaud them. Mm-hmm. Congrats. There was a few more yesterday. I don't know if you saw it. Italy and London. There was some pretty ferocious fighting back. Yeah, but yeah it's, it's very few and far between though. Yeah, but listen. Um, and personally, I love the idea. Yeah, let's buy you know, three hundred acres out in Wyoming, and uh, you know we'll raise our own food and and chickens and uh, some goats and pigs maybe, and you know. Uh, we'll all band together and look after each other. They'll find you and they'll come for you. You become another Waco. Look what they did to Waco for Christ's sakes. Uh-huh. You know, you know. Let's cut away all the propaganda about w- what David Koresh did or did not do. Let's just focus on what actually happened. What actually happened is the U.S. military and 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 Secret Service. And law enforcement agencies descended on the place and burned them alive. They dropped bombs on them. They gassed them. They shot them. Men, women, children, they slaughtered them all. And when they escaped from the burning building, they ran over them with tanks. What more do you need to know, folks? Mm -hmm. What more do you need to know? So if you think that you're going to have a nice, you know, compound with, uh, you know, uh, a few dozen, you know, righteous <clears throat> members of your community and that they're not going to come and burn you alive, then think again, because it's already happened. Yeah. And whatever David Koresh did or didn't do did not merit the wholesale slaughter of men, women, and children. Same thing with Ruby Ridge. What was that about? He sold a sawed off shotgun. And for that FBI snipers shoot his wife and infant in her arms, you mean, mm-hmm. and the dog, and the kids, and everybody. They, the, the FBI came in there and murdered everybody. It wasn't because he sold the sawed-off shotgun. It was because he was off-grid, and he promoted uh, a self-sufficient uh, lifestyle. That's why they came for him, and that's why they killed everybody. And... Uh, how many more examples? What was that guy? Down William there? Cooper. There was another. Was it William Cooper? That uh, you know, he's like like the quote unquote conspiracy guy that was breaking down the new world order and actually came to him 
and yeah. shot him on his own property. I think I think it was uh, like the local sheriff or something just was like just blew him away in front of everyone. So yeah, I mean it's it's gonna ha- it's a fight inevitably. It's gonna be uh, a fight. Uh, there's there's no way around it. Whether you're you're off grid, whether you're in an urban area uh, or a city, although. I, I think you're more likely not to survive if you're in a city. I don't know if you agree with that, Stefan. I mean, I think your your, your chances of survival uh, will be a little bit better out in the woods. I guess we're all going to have to learn how to become Rambos, I guess, right? <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think your chances are a little bit better out in a small town. I mean, uh, so long as you can blend in, you know, so long as you can become invisible, like you mentioned earlier, mm-hmm. the real key to surviving this is to be as invisible as possible. <clears throat> but um, okay, let's move on to the next uh, thing. Uh, a heavy progressive, a graduated income tax. Well, what else is new? Here in Canada, Justin Castro, the bastard, <clears throat> son, the bastard son of Fidel Castro, has raised the carbon tax yet again. It's now been raised 530 percent since they first instituted it a year and a half ago, or was it two years ago? I don't remember. So you have to understand Canada, the cleanest country in the world, the cleanest air, the freshest water, you know, 98% of our land mass is complete wilderness, virgin wilderness. We have to pay carbon tax. (laughs) China doesn't pay carbon tax. Oh, no. Uh, Indonesia, Vietnam, you know, uh, all these countries that literally dump all their poison and toxinous waste directly into the rivers and oceans and whose air quality is the worst in the world they don't pay carbon tax but the cleanest country in the world we're playing through the nose for everything you know as soon as it came through everything became more expensive again gas went up food went up lumber prices quadrupled you know it all just went through the roof food costs went up we're paying for it because that's what communists do they tax you to death so be prepared. And already what, what was going on there in, in the States with Biden, isn't he proposing new taxes as well? That's the first thing they do is raise the taxes. And by raise the taxes, I mean the first thing they do is loot the population. And so we have to figure out strategies of hiding your income. That's why they don't want you to do anything in cash. That's why everything has to be credit card, and pretty soon it's going to be, you know, electronic currency, so they can monitor, uh-huh. tax everything you do. I noticed, like just this last couple of months, I got notifications from Google and AdSense and YouTube and PayPal, and everybody's saying, "Oh, by the way, you need to fill out your tax forms uh, in order for us to keep paying you without withholding tax." I filled out these tax forms already ten years ago. Um, for all these uh, companies and mm-hmm. uh, I, under under Canadian law, I don't have to pay taxes in the U.S. if I'm not working in the U.S. I'm working in Canada, so whatever money they send me, they can't withhold the tax, but they're going to. They're <laughs> going to. Oh, yeah, that's why they're sending out all this. Whoa. <coughs> Be sure to <coughs> comply with our tax regulations. And it's gotten so insane that PayPal suspended my account. I went in there. I said, what the hell is wrong? Uh, they said, well, you have to submit all these forms. I already submitted all that stuff. They already have my my driver's license, my passport, my social security number, my bank statements. They already got all that. What else do you need? Well, there's one more category of document you must submit, and that is called uh, authenticated an authenticated document. Okay. <laughs> I was on the phone with PayPal support every day for a week, talking to one representative after another, after another. What is an authenticated document? I have no idea what you're talking about. What am I supposed to send you guys for you to unfreeze my PayPal account, which is my entire source of income comes through PayPal, so I can't pay the bills, I can't do groceries, mm. I can't buy cat food for my, my darling puss cats be, until I submit this form. Nobody could tell me. It was always the same story. Well, I don't know. Hold on. <laughs> ask around the office. So I'm on hold for half an hour to come back. Well, I asked everybody in the office. Nobody knows. 
But what we'll do is I'm going to put it up to the team and we're going to send you an email tomorrow on how to submit your authenticated document. Okay, I'm waiting for the email. Email comes through. In answer to your question, you must submit an authenticated document. <laughs> <laughs> just put, just send him a picture, right? And uh, put a little fake mustache on there or whatnot. Sign off your name and uh, I don't know what you could put in the background or whatnot, but send him something. Uh, yeah, I've got that with, I've gotten that similar with Facebook too. Facebook was, uh, Leary, I, I, by the way, I got a three day suspension on Facebook uh, last week for one of my articles that was uh, covering the vaccine, uh, the Vatican uh, Beast Conference, where they're bringing in Chelsea Clinton and Dr. Fauci. They, they call it a mind, body, and soul conference. And I was like, yep, and I don't think so. Uh, but in any case, I just, I just made an article on that, and they, they pulled me down for that. It was, I don't know what it was, like hate speech or whatnot. But uh, sometimes when they ban you, in order to get back, you, you'll have to provide uh, authenticated papers, too, as well. Uh, and then at one point they they were asking if you wanted to like upgrade your security and they were asking for like thumbprints and all that. It was like getting really bizarre. It's like, dude, this is Facebook. Uh, relax. You know what I mean? But it, it's getting bizarre, man, on, on some of these, uh, social media outlets. But, um, we know what the next step is going to be too. social, social, the social credit system. I'm going to argue we're already in a social credit system. Maybe we are. Think, yeah. So. We are. Yeah. Anyway, so five days of calling PayPal, I'm just going to finish this off. I find it. I said, uh, well, who wants this? And they said, oh, it's the government of Canada that wants this. <laughs> <laughs> I said, well, I am shocked that the government of Canada would stick their nose in your business so that they can find out a way of stealing more money from me. Shocked, I say. Anyway, so now I phone Revenue Canada, which is our version of the IRS. Hmm. I'm on the phone for two hours with some guy. I said, can you tell me, because it's apparently you guys that want this document and PayPal is just, you know, acquiescing to the demands of the Canadian government. What the hell is an authenticated document? Um, well, geez, I don't know. Hold on a second. I'm going to ask around the office. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Here we go. Yeah. I'm on hold again for an hour. He comes back. You know what? Nobody knows. But tomorrow I'm going to send you an email with the answer. <laughs> hey. Maybe it's the same guy. He was working for PayPal last week, and then he uh, he jumped on over ship and is working for the for the Canadian IRS. I don't know. Yeah. So, uh, but, anyways, I got the email. I opened it. It's a link to a website. Has nothing to do with. I can't find authenticated document anywhere. So there you go. Okay, but okay. listen, this is again typical. This is uh, uh, um, Kafka esque. You know, you are charged with a crime. Um, what am I charged with? We can't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. You must provide documents in order to be paid. Uh, what kind of... We can't tell you. <laughs> you know, I'm, 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 but this is communism, folks. Get used to it. You're going to have to do this for everything. Everything. You're going to go to the store. You want to buy some beer? Well, or you need an authenticated document to prove that you're not an alcoholic. Yeah, the digital the digital checkpoints will come before the physical checkpoints. They'll be in the streets one day asking for your papers, right? Yep. Yeah, yeah. So we know oh, the they've digital. They've already tried that. They've already tried that. That was the latest development here in Ontario, where our premier, uh, which is the Canadian equivalent to a state governor, uh, Doug Ford, who is no, uh, his only claim to fame is that he's the brother of Rob Ford. He was the mayor of Toronto until this video came up showing him smoking a crack pipe with mm. a notorious Somalian <laughs> drug gang. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Talk about Mary and Barry there in, in, in Washington, right? All right, have, yeah. You, you think Canada is not corrupt? Our mayors are smoking crack. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Most livable, though, according to the, the U.S. News and World Report. Sure. Crack it. Sure, it's a great place to live. <laughs> the Canada, the fantasy land, apparently. Uh, where are we at? We on point three now? I, we, we love, we're having so much fun. We're, we're losing track of what point we're on now. Are we on point three? Okay, point three. Abolition of all rights of inheritance. So here again. Listen, you think uh, that uh, when dear old dad... Uh, passes away, you're going to inherit the house? Mm -mm -mm. Not no. for you. Remember, you will own nothing and you will be happy. And one way to make sure that you will own nothing is the government will take your inheritance. 
Yes. Mm -hmm. That's coming. So um, what I recommend is for those of you who are older now and approaching retirement and imminent death, which is, of course, we all face every day of our lives because sure. there's no such, no such thing as guaranteed life. But anyways, if you're getting on in years and you want to leave something to your children, you have to think of a way of doing it. You have to maybe establish a trust and leave your house to the trust, not to your children, because they're going to make sure your kids don't get your stuff. They're going to make sure that Justin Castro gets your stuff. Kamala Harris is going to get your stuff, not your children. So we need to start to think right now, before this goes any further, on how to hide your wealth and transfer it to your children now. And again, I would recommend if you have you know, a, a lot of cash or a lot of valuable items in your house, um, sell it, convert it to silver and gold, give it to your children now. Because if you die... The state is going to take it, pure and simple. And your kids and everything that you've worked your life for and everything that your grandparents have worked their lives for is all going to evaporate. You won't get a penny of it because we're living under a communist country. That's what they do. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, number three, figure out a way. I would look into trusts because we know that's how all the billionaires protect their money. Um, you know, Bill Gates doesn't actually own his own money. It's all in the trusts. Mm -hmm. Same thing with the with the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. That's just a cover. It's just so mm -hmm. that you can't steal Bill's money because he's hidden it in a trust. But it doesn't mean Bill can't access that money anytime he wants. Of course he can. What's the point of a trust if you can't take your own money back? But the point of a trust is to... Uh, circumvent the tax collector. So, folks, if you've got money, uh, if you've got property, you know, if you want to leave the family farm to your kids, you better put it into a trust, form a nonprofit organization, you know, uh, 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 old McDonald's farm charity, you know, or <laughs> 501c3, you know, um, because that's the only way your kids are going to get a penny of what you leave behind because the communists will take it. Mm. Uh, what do we got for number four? Maybe we could do five of them. We're getting a little bit short on time, but I think we squeeze Yeah, I know. We, go, we have too much fun, Eric, you and I. Just, I we, know. I know we do. Sure. <laughs> then we get carried away and uh, have too good a time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the... Uh, I'm going to skip... Well, okay, so um, we've already gone through the... Um, the confiscation of property, that's, that's number four again. Um, confiscation of property of all immigrants, emigrants, not immigrants, and rebels. So here's the thing. If you think that, oh, my God, I'm going to move to Mexico and I'm going to take my money with me. No, 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 no. If you're emigrating, if you're trying to escape a communist country, you must leave every penny you own behind. For the government to take that's the way it works hmm. so if you have any plans of getting out of the country move your money out now you won't be allowed to take it with you in two years so all, all those people going i'm going to go to mexico sure sounds good nice weather you know low low uh, cost of living cheap dentists <laughs> you know all right I want to move to Mexico. I'd, I'd be happy to move to Mexico. But once the communists shut this stuff down, you won't be able to take your money. So mm -hmm. go ahead, move to Mexico and be homeless there because you won't be allowed to transfer your money over. So if you have any plans of moving to another country, even if it's, you know, let's say it's Eastern Europe or, or the or, or the Maldives or something like that, send your money over there now. I made so, a I made a recommendation on our last podcast with um – with uh, Ibn, she's a she's a Catholic Danish journalist, and she's in Denmark has fallen apart at the at the wheels too. Oh. Um, but uh, I said I said we should all pitch together and buy ourselves a submarine. We'll call it the USS Corona, and we'll just dive twenty thousand leagues under the sea just to get away from these people. Think they can find us down there uh, with, with their with their satellites, uh, <laughs> Stefan? Well, you know that Indonesian submarine uh, just <laughs> went missing, and uh, they were in the area 
of disputed waters with China. So yeah, they'll find you. <laughs> right, right, right. No, there's no way to hide. Like I mean, I know. Unless you dig a hole, you live in a cave up in the mountains somewhere in Montana. Uh, you know, like yeah. there is no escape. This is what I was warning people about. This is why mm-hmm. I'm saying it's urgent. We have to fight this because once these bastards seize all control, there is no escape. You know, back in the in the 30s and 40s and 50s, under the, under the Soviet regime. Um, they still had a slim chance, but at least there was a chance for them to escape or defect to the West. That was when the West still had the semblance of democracy and freedom. Now there is no escaping anywhere. This communism is worldwide. It's China. It's Europe. It's America. It's Australia. It's Canada. It's New Zealand. It's South America, it's Central America. They have locked it down the world over, so there is no escape. But if you did want to move out of the country, if you have plans, maybe you're a descendant of uh, Croatian immigrants and uh, you want to go back to your grandparents' home in Croatia, send your money there now. Mm. You know, even if it's in the form of silver and gold bullion, have it shipped there, have it stored in in a location by people you trust, not the banks. And uh, so if you ever do have to go to Croatia and get out of here, there'll be money there in the form of silver and gold. Somebody needs to develop some cloaking uh, cloaking device uh, <laughs> for us real fast so we can just go invisible and we can move about like an invisible man. I've already looked into that. The, uh, yeah. my, the Mylar blankets are pretty effective in hiding you from uh, infrared uh, and night vision uh, goggles. So. Hmm, I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because we know about a ghillie suit, right? Where uh, it's it's a camouflage suit, and you know you crouch down in the bushes. Nobody can see you in the daylight, uh, but at night they can pick up your infrared signature. Mm. So you can hide by daytime, but at night the drones will find you, unless you line your ghillie suit with mylar, and then the mylar that you know the the, the space blanket stuff, right? Mm. And that will reflect back your body heat. And apparently it's quite effective in disguising your heat. Yeah. So that's one way of going invisible, you know. Um, mm-hmm. Anyways. One more, uh, buddy. Uh, and we'll, yeah, we're hitting that almost 45 minute marks. So we got a few minutes left. And we want, we also want to give you some shameless self-promotion time too as well so we can promote uh, your work and uh, so we can help uh, support what you're doing. But uh, let's, get, let's get the last one in here. Fifth, the fifth uh countering a communist goal. Just one more. Uh, Centralization of credit in the hands of the state Mm. by means of a national bank with state capital and an exclusive monopoly. Well, that's already happened. (laughs) Right, yeah. It's like we've passed that point. We've passed that point. So already, but the thing is, we have to figure out different ways of monetary exchange because the credit, the banks, the, you know, and I'm not a big fan of crypto coins or cryptocurrency or Bitcoin. I don't believe it just between you and me. I don't believe it for a minute. Listen, uh, that's what they want. Anyways, the, the banks want everybody to go into crypto coins and things like that. But we need to figure out a barter system. Now, silver and gold, it's again, you know, that's kind of our last resource that we could, you know, take a couple of ounces of silver, drive out to the countryside, talk to Farmer McDonald. And ask, you know, do you have any eggs and milk and uh, maybe a couple of pork chops? Here's an ounce of silver. But uh, we have to figure out a black market. You need to start making the connections now to deal with a black market. So you need to make contact with the producers of the commodities that you will need and, you know, tell them, listen, in two years, is it okay if I pay you with real silver? You know, uh, <laughs> silver bullion. Can we work something out? Find out who's going to be willing to the, do something like that. And trust me, the farmers and, and the people that produce things, they are going to be in big trouble, too, because already the government's coming down on them, uh, which is uh, uh, Section 7 of their manifesto. And that is to take over all food production. So they're going to be targeting targeting the farmers too. the farmers are going to be taxed and regulated into near bankruptcy. So they will be perfectly happy to accept 
your silver one ounce rounds. Right. Mm. Mm-hmm. So start working on that now, folks. Figure out ways of uh, of creating a black market. Black markets have always existed under tyrannical regimes for as far back in history as you want to go, because that's what happens. The government controls everything in order to purchase or sell without the government destroying your life. You need to have a black market and that black market <coughs> needs to be established among people like-minded people that are willing to take the slight risk of uh, exchanging goods without the government taking their cut Mm. and ultimately uh too it's going to get to such a level we believe in in, in christian circles of course with this b system that they're going to want to tag and bag you personally forget about all the stuff around you like you personally uh so they want to know everything that you're doing they want to know ahead of time if you're going to commit a crime uh, it's like Minority Report. It's getting very weird. They got this Google oh, Nest, thing, the Google Nest thing, which can monitor your own breath. Did you happen to see the Pentagon DARPA COVID sensing microchip? They're now talking about where they. It's, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's just getting bizarre, man. Like, I wish I was making these headlines up, but like, listen, if you're already stupid enough to do the mass and the vaccines, who's to say you're not going to be stupid enough to take the microchip, right? Because I would yeah. always get Christians around me saying, "Oh, uh, Eric, whatever." If it ever got to that level, I would never do that. And here here I am looking at these people from a distance and they're already masking. They're already talking about getting the vaccine. Sure. So what's the you know, what's 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 to say that they're not gonna go to, to, to that next level? Especially when we know uh the communists are, are making a play on resources, you know, and they, they wanna control it. So um, I don't know, man. It's just crazy times that we live in. But in any case, uh Stefan, parting words here. Uh shameless self promotion time. So what what do we need to promote this month? This month, we need to promote my consultation service. You know, people have been asking me, listen, you know, I'd really like to talk to you. Uh, Can we get together? And I didn't have like a mechanism for any of that. I've spent a lot of free time uh, replying to emails, people that have questions. Um, You know, I have like a dozen people that I call, you know, once a month just to check in on them. You know, a homeless guy that lives out of his car, I call him once a month. It makes his day when I call and talk to him, you know, because he's all by himself. Uh, I have another woman who lives, uh, you know, she she drives a, a 16-wheeler. She lives in the cab of her of her truck. She hasn't had a home in, in five years, you know, her and her dog and her cat, you know. I, I, f- I feel terrible for these people. I mean, she, she makes enough money, but just barely enough. So I have been calling these people and many others, and talking to them, but, and and not charging for it or anything like that. Just, you know, like trying to help people out, you know, giving sure. them some moral courage. You know what I mean, mm-hmm. Eric? You know, this is what Christians should be doing. This is what sure. I've done my whole life, you know. I feel badly for people that are homeless and that are struggling like this. And if me talking to them for half an hour or an hour on the phone makes them feel more positive about life, helps to keep them going, then I'm willing to do that. Um, but now I'm getting too many requests for that. So I've started charging for it. Uh, you go to my website, chinastrategies.com. You click on the link that says uh, preparedness consulting. And generally, I mean, when I started this off, I, w- I will, you know, spend, uh, you know, an hour and a half with you. And we go through all your preps. You know, I, I take into account where you live, how many people in your family, uh, what resources you have, what preps you've already made, and then we we make plans: what to do to escape your area, what to do to survive. Are there any weaknesses in your your prepping strategy? So I started off like that, and and everybody was fabulously happy. Um, you know, okay. they feel better that you can talk to somebody mm-hmm. uh, that can say, listen, OK, let's go over what you've got. OK, that's good. That's good. This could be improved. You're OK there. Don't be afraid of this. And then at the end of it, you feel better because you know that now you have options. You know, yeah. we get this, this fear porn 24 seven from every direction. Everybody's freaked out. Anxiety attacks, panic attacks. People are nervous all the time. And talking to me and saying, listen, don't be that nervous. You have many options available. You will survive this. You'll get through this. And you, when we come out at the end, <coughs> there will be a better time. There will be a new, a new age. Maybe there will be the second coming. Who knows? But you know what else? About 40% of the people that have booked with me in the last month didn't want to talk about prepping. They just wanted to talk 
to somebody that wasn't insane. <laughs> right. Yeah. No, I was about to say that. Yeah. It's yeah, hard no. to find. No, but I did too internally for my uh, folks, uh, Stefan, because I, I see the need to it. I have the program that we used, um, the webinar jam. Oh, you came on the web conference. And we had that. I can yeah. use that program to actually launch like a live chat. And like, I don't even have to be around. Like I could just shut off my microphone, shut everything down and I could just leave it up. So my people in my community, they could just go on there and chat with other people from around the world. So that's what they were doing yesterday. And I popped in every once in a while to check out the live chat, but that's all they were talking about was preparedness, building communities. You know, what are you doing? Sort of like, like, like what you're saying, building the underground, sort of a black market type of thing. And I'm going to run that, uh, you know, that program internally free for my members. Uh, but I think that's, that's huge. So people yeah. can, you know what I mean? Just, just, so just to talk to someone just to talk to someone that like you said is not nuts and has to take in the bait i think is important yeah that's what they say you know i'm all by myself my family doesn't think thinks i'm crazy uh my co-workers i dare not speak anything at at the at the office because they'll fire me uh no my neighbors don't like me i won't have anything to do with me because they once heard me post a comment on facebook saying that i didn't believe in the candy and the and the cooties you know like right, 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 people right. are isolated and alone and when you're isolated and alone you tend to get a little bit paranoid you know and a little bit depressed and uh, the other thing, uh, and because I ask everybody to write a review after I've I've uh, done a consultation with me, and one common theme they all had was, Stefan made me laugh for the first time in months. That's huge. Laughing is huge. I I make it a point now. I re- I've actually have it written down so I don't forget. Spend at least thirty minutes a day laughing. I'll, I'll get on there. My kick latest, uh, Stefan. I've been getting onto YouTube and watching like news bloopers. <laughs> oh man, they are they are hilarious. I mean, there's yeah. some great compilations out there, but I think that's hugely important uh, yeah. to kind of keep that balance. Yeah, yeah, because uh, listen, when I talk to you, you know me. I have a wry sense of humor, a dry sense of humor. Um, but the people that are awake and get it, they get my sense of humor. The the mask wearers never get my, <laughs> my sense. Oh, of humor. Right, 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 right. Yeah, it goes no, all true. over their head. You know, it just goes whoosh over their head. You know, because my sense of humor is more based on like wit and uh, mm-hmm. commentary and, and and play with words. And I, I swear to God, the people I talk to, I make them laugh. We're talking about the end of the world and the most <laughs> serious situation and how we're all going to die. And, but no reason we can't laugh at it <laughs> right yeah hey we're all in the same boat right i mean this is this yeah. is worldwide what we're in so that's so it that, man fantastic yeah that's my latest offer talk to me we can talk about prepping but if you just want to talk about life and uh in general or the state of the world i think uh, people that have listened to my my uh interviews they know who i am sure so then we can talk about that and um I'll be honest with you, and I don't normally brag about myself or anything like that or promote myself, but what a lot of people, my friends, you know, what they've all said is that after talking to you, I'm always inspired. So I try to lift you up, folks. Mm -hmm. I try to inspire you to to, uh, enjoy life and uh, Mm -hmm. to be successful in what you do. I'm not a life coach or anything like that. I hate that bullshit. Uh, I'm just a regular guy. Mm. But I try and stay upbeat when I talk to you in purpose, uh, in person. Other good than, st- yeah. Yeah, no, good stuff, Stefan. We appreciate you always taking uh, time out. Very, very appreciative uh, of that. And uh, for Stefan's uh, listening uh, audience, uh, yeah, I encourage everyone to get over to trackatnight.org. I bring on some of the top preppers and survivalists. I added a new survivalist, uh, Bjorn Hansen from out in Norway. Uh, he's got a very popular... Yeah, Bjorn's Bjorn's good. Yeah, I've been talking to him behind the scenes. He's got a huge YouTube channel, and uh, he seems to really get it. So um, I've got him coming back on in a few weeks. But do come over and join us over 100 podcasts a month. I've got thousands, thousands of podcasts and video interviews uh, in the uh, archives. So we do hope you come and join uh, the Tradcat uh, Trad Night community. Of course, Stefan. Uh, always joins us as well. So uh, we do have to get going here. Look for uh, Stefan next month. And uh, listen, folks, until next time, stay safe and God bless.